Uh, I was given a slightly uh, tougher task than Irfan. I was told not only can I not use PowerPoint, I can't use any paper either since it's a digital uh, forum. So I have to rely on my digital notes. But on the, on the positive side, I was told I have only seven minutes, which must be good news for you guys who've been uh, sitting over here throughout the day. Uh, given the paucity of time, I'll just focus on the journey that Jazz has taken. I'll try to not make it a commercial. Uh, but there are a lot of pitfalls that organizations make. So I'm sure throughout the day you've talked or heard about the fourth industrial revolution, elements of it like IoT, big data, effective utilization of analytics, uh, also about uh, machine learning and artificial intelligence. I think these are all nice intelligent buzzwords that we will hear more and more of. But what does it actually mean for us, people sitting in this room? Uh, we are mostly uh, interested in business. We are probably business owners or we are business customers uh, or we are business uh, executives. What does it mean? Uh, there's a lot of information which we have heard today. How do we transform our organizations? And what I'm going to try to do over the next four or five minutes is just share our own journey uh, in the last two years on why and how we have tried to uh, transform ourselves from a telecom to a tech company and why it was important. Generally, the perception is telecoms are very technologically advanced. And that was the case in 1994 when I first started working at Mobilink. But when I got the opportunity again in 2015, it was already a 21-year-old company. It was, by the technological standards, a dinosaur. So how do you transform a dinosaur? How do you, uh, you know, teach this old dog new tricks? And why we had to change? Now, part of the biggest, uh, the, the biggest problem is our ability to unlearn. We all see these presentations. Uh, we all go to uh, nice courses around the world in different business schools and technological forums. But why is it that so, so many companies continue to fail? It is because I think we go with the arrogance that what has made us successful will continue to make us successful. And that's never the case. So uh, when you know, we transformed or when we started getting onto this journey, we were already seeing signs of sluggishness. Remember that success leads to uh, Complacency, complacency, or success leads to arrogance, actually. And arrogance leads to complacency, and complacency eventually leads to failure. So the first thing to look for is, have you been ridiculously successful in the past? And can you actually continue to be successful the same way? The challenge that we had before us uh, a couple of years ago was, how do we transform? We saw the inevitable decline of voice and data revenue. We had a huge number of subscriber base, but it was the OTTs like the WhatsApp and the Facebooks of the world which were coming and stealing our lunch. We could allow them to do that, or we could actually do something to circumvent it. Can we fight Facebook? Probably not. Can we fight, uh, fight WhatsApp? Probably not. But we can do intelligent partnerships. We can try to see the trends. But it all starts from recognizing what your own shortcomings as an organization is. So let me just talk about two elements uh, that we thought about in terms of our digital transformation. One is internal um, digitization, and the other is external. What do I mean by internal? I cannot be a digital company to my customers unless I'm a digital company internally. Two years ago, and I'm happy to share these details, I was signing paper expenses, uh, which had seven other signatures, and this is 2015. Now, you can't operate like that. You can actually digitize it, but you're like, if you don't change the process, you will have eight digital signatures on a computer. That doesn't really change anything. So if you've got crap, you just convert it into digital crap. Sorry to use the words, but this is what most companies do. So you have to actually go back and reinvent the process also. So that's the first thing that you have to actually think about. You know, like, what are you inheriting? And digitization actually gives you a great opportunity to radically simplify every single thing. And when we talk about digital organizations and successful digital companies, one thing you will see in common is that they are radically simple. Their products are radically simple, not just simple. I mean, I'm sure most of you, how many of you use uh, WhatsApp? Yeah. Facebook? Ever called the call center for Facebook? No? I inherited 3,000 people who were taking calls. Is that necessary in this day and age? Why do they call? Because our products are complicated. So I'll come to the second part about the products. But the first part is you have to actually create a digital and uh, a transformed organization. Unless you as yourselves are not transformed, you cannot possibly transform it for your customers. It's just not possible. So what did we do internally? We switched to jeans and sneakers. Now, that's just a joke. I know it's late in the day. But you actually have to start doing a few things that digital companies do. Break the barriers, break the silos, simplify your processes. 
start unlearning. We are oldies, we are telco oldies. We cannot really think about what the next world is going to be. Inherit and hire people, create an environment where the fresh talent will come in from. And then start reverse mentoring process. I don't know, you know, like how to program, I don't know what apps are, but I can bring in the smartest kids from wherever and help them join my organization. But for that, my organization has to be sexy enough for the digital talent to come in there. If I'm going to be perceived like an old oil company or an old telco, the young talent is not going to come to me. They're going to go and start their own business, and rightfully so. So I actually have to transform myself as an organization so that the good talent actually comes in. And this is what I call reverse mentoring. You know, we have always typically thought about that I'm going to give management tools to my youngsters and they need to learn from us. Those days are over. Now you've got to learn from them. So this is the internal part of digital uh, transformation. The second part is once, and this is obviously a journey, and we have made some good progress over here and we'll continue to, but it is never really a one-year snapshot. Cultural transformations normally take about three years at bare minimum if you're successful. The second part is you've got to simplify life for your customers. So I was talking about, you know, like we had 3,000 people taking about 200,000 calls a day. Why do we receive 200,000 calls a day? Because our products are complicated, our tariffs are complicated, our ringtones have got complicated co tones and codes. This is why customers call us. So for us to simplify the life of our customers, we have to actually come eliminate the complexity from our tariffs. And I know that I'm giving a telecom example, but it doesn't really matter what industry you're in. Whatever product that you're selling, try to radically simplify it not just reduce the call inflow by 10% so that next year it's 180,000 calls and the year after that is 150,000. Try to make a product that does not require for your customer to call you. Alternatively, give them a solution on their device. You know, in five years' time, you will have about 75% smartphone penetration in Pakistan. Why would these people not use their phones to solve their problems? First of all, simplify the problem, and secondly, give them the tools to actually use the technology in their hands to be able to do that. So again, I recap two things. To transform, extremely important, I can't overemphasize. If you are not transformed as an organization, and the reason why I say this, I'll give you one example. You know, we don't hear about Codec. Codec existed for about 100 years. I don't know if that example has been used here earlier in the day or not. Disappeared from the face of planet. It used to be the Codec moment because they were not ready for the digital revolution or the digital cameras. Well, guess what? The digital camera was invented by Kodak. But you know what happened? The organization ate it up. Because you know, say, yeah, that's a nice little toy, just don't bring it to the boardroom, you know, like you lose your credibility. What are you going to do? You know, you're going to try to eat our business of film? So it was internally suffocated. And this is what happens when we know too much, when we're successful, there's that implicit arrogance that actually kills the small and the smart ideas. This is what happened to Kodak, one of the largest companies which had been there for about a 100 years. So the odds of us suffocating our smart ideas are a whole lot higher. Uh, be extremely wary, we be extremely paranoid. It's only, as I use an example, it's the, the quote, only the paranoid survive. So be paranoid about things from legacy that you see in your organization. And secondly, radically simplify your product, the entire value chain. That's all from myself. Happy to chat further later in the day. Thank you very much. <laughs>